Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called delete and earn, and it's a medium level dynamic programming problem. And so essentially you're just given a array called nums here, and you're playing a game where you want to get the maximum number of points. And the way this game works, and I'm kind of assuming you already read some of this, but basically you get to choose any number in here. So let's say we choose three, and basically if you choose that number, you get to add up the total uh, number of points that you can get by choosing that number, which is essentially the value of that number, which is three in this case, multiplied by the number of times it occurs, which is three, and so you get nine points. But the catch here, or the constraint, is that if you choose the number three, or any arbitrary number, let's just call it n, then you can't use the number that's n minus one, or n plus one. And so in this case, you would have to basically eliminate two, because that's n minus uh, one here, and you have to eliminate four, which is n plus one. All right, and so you get a total value or a total sum of nine. Let's say if you go a different route, well, that would be okay. Let's say you choose two first, and so that would eliminate one, but there's no ones here, and that would eliminate three. So then you'd get four points, but you can also choose this four here, and so you could add four extra points there, uh, which gives you eight. But, well, we saw before that we were able to get nine points by choosing three, and so because, well, nine's greater than eight, that would be the output. All right, and so that's basically how the algorithm works or what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but essentially, I'm gonna show you a time and space complexity solution of O of the maximum uh, numbers. So what that really means is basically the uh, time complexity is kind of going from like O, uh, or zero, uh, one, two, three, all the way to basically whatever number um, is the largest number in this particular array, nums array. And so in this case, uh, we'll have like a time and space complexity of like O of four, where four is the maximum number in here. And so that might not make much sense now, but I think it's very intuitive as you see like the uh, for loop that we're creating and the uh, DP array in the lookup table. And so what we're gonna do is we wanna have a quick lookup of what is the total number of points you're gonna get if you choose some number. And so we'll have basically a lookup of basically the index three will represent or return the value nine. And so that just means, okay, if we choose the number three, we'll get nine points. All right, and so to do that, it's uh, pretty simple where you just have, let's call it like num, a lookup maybe and so it's initially zero and we're just going to get basically the length of the numbers or sorry the maximum number in here and just add one to it and so that way we can have the kind of lookup table of saying okay uh, the number the value four will then map to well four because there's only one here and so basically to populate this with actual values other than zero We'll just iterate through all the numbers in our nums array and just say, okay, the num lookup at this particular number is, well, we want to add this number to it. And that basically just creates it. And so from here, we also want to have our DP array. And so what we're going to want to do is this array at the end of it is going to return our answer. So this is another common pattern where you kind of want to propagate forward at every step the uh, maximum number of points or the solution. And so at every single step or every index, as we move forward, it's going to have the answer at that point in time. And so at every step, it just says, okay, at this particular number, this would be the maximum number of points that we could get. And so basically what that looks like is then, okay, let's just iterate through a particular range. And we're gonna go from two to the length of our uh, num lookup array here. And so the way this works, and the reason why we're starting at two here, is initially this DP array will also be just uh, a bunch of zeros multiplied by the length of our num lookup, because they're gonna have the same lengths basically as this. And so initially the DP array that we have here at index one is going to directly map to the num lookup at the same index at one here. And so this just means, okay, at one, we would be able to get 
this many points if we only considered one. And so beyond that point, we're basically going to have two pointers that's saying, okay, um, if we choose the current number that we're at and we include everything that's two steps behind it, what's the number of points that we can get? But we also want to uh, consider what's the number of points that we can get if we look at one step behind it. And I'll quickly write this out and explain this further, uh, but I think it'll make more sense in a second. And so basically the DP array at the index um, n will be equal to the maximum of the two possible choices that we can make, which is essentially how ma however many points we can get at the current index, plus what we could get basically two steps behind it because we can't consider uh, one step behind it. But let's also compare this to basically the number of points we can get one step behind this point. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, it looks like there's something wrong here. So let me just think for a second. So we're going from two to the end. And well, I know that we also want to, or let's see here. Hmm. That's our num lookup, that looks good. At this particular point. And then this goes to the end. Same here. Oh, sorry about that. We want to consider the one one step behind it. There we go. Okay, so essentially what's going on here is what we're doing is the DP array, what it does is it represents at every point in time, what's the maximum number of points that we can get. And so the very end of this will hold that answer. But at every step, what we want to do is consider, okay, we can either include this particular number that we're at and everything that we've propagated so far, two steps behind it, or we could choose to just get what's one step behind it. And so that way you can kind of um, not consider what is one number ahead by always just looking back um, one and two steps behind it. And so it's kind of a, it's a, a lazy way of doing it. Um, and so this is what's kind of adding the numbers here because initially it's just zero and the first answer is filled, but this is what holds the actual number lookup of how much values that we're getting. But we're constantly just kind of storing in this memoization or this caching that we're doing um, at every single step. And this is just the two branches that we can go down. Okay, so I, I hope I explained that quite well. Um, it's not very intuitive. I find this solution much, much better uh, than the alternative. So yeah, once again, it's just O of the maximum uh, number in this array, and that's kind of the uh, time and space complexity. But let's go ahead and just run this. Oh, now let's go ahead and run it. And success, so yeah, pretty performance solution. But I hope that helped, and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.